continue to work on this in terms of the marketing and bringing people in, but there's so many levels and layers here that all need a voice, uh, it seems, but to be able to lay it out in a, in, a, in a time frame, as you say, March 1st, what's the objective there? What's the longer term objective? As you're saying, how do you market this? As you're saying, can I get the list? I can get on the phone. We could at least get X amount, maybe you know, a percentage more, maybe not double it at this point, but at least we can be moving and to be working on those multiple uh, layers here, which I know you're, you've, been, you've been trying to do. And as you're saying, the focus was, uh, the focus was this. It wasn't on the other, because that's what the money was for. And it's not about being a culprit, I don't think. I think it's, you, you can only go where you need to go, and as you get into it more, you begin to find out, man, how much is really there? And how much needs to be done? And it just goes deeper and deeper, but at some point, you can only say, look, we can only do so much. So if this is for the long haul, if it's really for the objective that it states in here, then hopefully all these other things will follow. At the same time, without all of these things that these last few speakers have presented, this will be very, very limited in, in its scope and its understanding. And the last point, you're talking about the idea of uh, Comcast or whatever, and people say, hey, I want my cable. <laughs> you know, I'm not paying more for that, or I don't want to get that cut out, or I don't understand what that is anyway. And, and we love our television in this country. Whether the revolution will or will not be televised ah. is of no importance right now. We are all dragged into that 3D box right there. It is just all consuming. And that, it's amazing how we will let so many other things go. But that television, that cable, that dish <laughs> is of prime importance. It's almost as if, okay, well, how do you speak through that to try to draw people in? Okay, go where people are. And so if, uh, Reverend, I, I'm sure, Reverend Barnes, yes, uh, with, I'm uh, you, you know, I'm just saying, I don't know if that's your name, I'm sorry. If, Nash. Nash, I'm sorry. If you know the community and you yeah. can do these things, then that's a good thing to get that assemblage to move forth. Anyway. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now we need to, uh, it's, it's approaching 11 o'clock. And before people start leaving, I'd like to really address the question of next steps. Uh, we haven't really discussed this proposal at great length, but the question is whether or not that's the objective or whether or not we want additional uh, issues addressed, um, whether it would be important to have some subcommittees <coughs> do some work uh, so that at our next meeting we have something to deliberate on. Anyone have any ideas about the next steps? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, as I've been listening, what seems to clearly be missing is with the community voice in respect to university, I feel like I feel like this man should never have to say he's willing to let somebody speak on his behalf when it's such, supposed to be such a community involved thing. Okay? He should feel comfortable knowing that he's part of this as anybody. And right now I feel like just by paying attention, one of the next steps is is making sure that the people who are willing to be involved from the community know that when it comes to this, the university's responsibilities and, 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 and what they claim that they want to get out of this, that there's a commitment there. I mean, without that, what's the point of anybody sitting here going through these motions and putting their heart in this? Because one thing that scares me about this is that it has the same, it has the same, same, same kind of feeling about everything else that I've I'm not from here, all right? But I'm here, okay? The university and community don't have a good relationship. You know, this, this program is not gonna mend all of that just because it's necessary for this program to be successful. But it is necessary for this program to be successful. So, all right. Um, I think in the next steps, y'all should really hold somebody accountable as for, as for making sure the university is willing to do what they say they're going to do. Because this, this is kind of feeling like this is going to be short-lived. It's kind of feeling like they'll charge it off as a welfare, uh, you know, a chance to try to do something better. And if it don't work, they're going to leave it on our shoulders like what well, we didn't do, we were supposed to do. And, and that's scary because this has the potential to be very, very important. You know, this is supposed to be a city that's pioneering this technology and all the rest. And I don't know, you know, I, I like the idea of having that type of capability at home. I think other people do too, but 
think one of the next steps, but I'm gonna keep it short, is is knowing is is, is getting a commitment from the university <clears throat> that if, if people start really putting blood, sweat, and tears in this, it's not gonna go by the wayside, and and and, and people's efforts aren't gonna be charged off as a uh, well, good try, you know, at any end of this. So I think that's important. I, I don't think that I'd be willing to move on anything until I hear that, until I know it, until that's put in paperwork, and that's. You know, somebody's gonna decide to hold themselves accountable at the university. You know what I mean? Because because they're the ones who are in a position to to to, to do away with this program whenever they're ready, or make it what it could be. As a community with the boys, we're we're all here just like regular clothes and stuff. We don't have much to go you know go with except for our effort. I, I would want to just make a point that uh, I think the university put up a million dollars. Money ain't everything when you talk about people no, leaving no, their no, homes no. I, it, it's not to, everything. to help out. It's not everything, but it's something we need to know. Because when somebody says uh, that the community doesn't have a vote uh, to spend the money, the question we have to ask is, whose money is going to be put up that allows somebody else to spend it? The community they didn't ask for this. The university brought this forward. And a million dollars, when you talk about breaking concrete and laying a whole infrastructure under the city, is nothing. It's nothing. A million dollars is not a good faith anything. You know, not in this respect. You know, I was talking to some of the guys laying the, laying the, uh, laying, laying the cable work. A million dollars is nothing. Like, he can bust up a million dollars in concrete in one ship. I could. A million dollars is nothing. That's not something that the community is going to be able to go home and sleep well about. I don't well think the people who could uh, spend a million dollars in that afternoon are, are, are hopefully going to get the contract to continue because we need more productivity for our money than that. But I take your point. I'm just saying I, that one man could remove a million dollars worth of concrete on his own that day. A million dollars, when you talk about, you know, the cable, the, 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 the fiber optic cables themselves cost more than that. When you, I mean, just... It was Look. tens of millions. He was talking about a million separate from the, what, 30 million? Or yeah, and see, and I'm only speaking on what I've been hearing here today. You know, I, I, I have not been involved. You know, Brian's been keeping me up with a little bit of information, but I have not been fully involved. But, you know, I, I know that this scares me. I know that with March 1st being a deadline for subscriptions and we're still having this conversation, you know, something went, something went awry from when he was talking to me a year and a half, like, this has been a long time coming. Yeah. I apologize that I'm showing up late too. I'm not making no excuses, but that's what it is. And and for people to have been here all these times, I just I feel like something got lost here. I think everybody agrees with that. I think that's the next step: figuring out what, figuring out figuring out how will you get the numbers up to be able to utilize the money that 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 is available. You know, and and and. By March first, I don't. I don't want to be pessimistic. So wait, do I have a question? Wait just a second. There's. I got an order of speakers here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and Ron, mm -hmm. and then you third. Okay. Thank you. Because I am. I do have to leave. I have another event to attend. But before I go, I would. I, I in my notes that I'm taking here, the next steps include. I got one and I got two. So okay. Uh, for for one, to me, my idea would be. And I think Imani, she, when she came over and uh, shared with us a thought that she had, I think that's a good next step. And that is a strategy to get more people signed up. And so we're, we're going to do that. I think more people need to, uh, there needs to be uh, like a, 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 a crusade, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> you right. know, people who will say, okay, um, you take a group of three, let's take a group of three people and let's just, you know, do some, let's just pound the pavement or whatever, something like that. Uh, that would be a next step. And then I, I whispered to my husband, it sounds to me like, because I work with access too. And so a lot of what I'm hearing you say is exactly some of the stuff that we, you know, that have to be dealt with. And sustainability is one. So, you know, what are we going to do? We need... We, we need to be thinking about sustainability. You know, where are we going to go when the money run out? What, you know, what's going to happen? Who's going to be in place? I think we need to um, have maybe, maybe three committees or maybe two committees with two or three people on that committee who will push getting more people signed up, working on what could happen as far as sustainability is concerned. Now, that's just... 
And I have to apologize, like the young man here, I haven't been coming to the meetings, but my husband's been keep, kind of keeping me up uh, when I have time to pay attention to what he's saying. <laughs> but um, I do want to, I, I do want to get more involved. But you want to pay attention to right. when, I, when, when I have time to pay attention is what I say. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, one and two to me are vital next steps. Uh, and what he meant, what Imani suggested is, is that uh, she do a video taping of of Pastor and myself for number one. It could be more people who I would reach out to first ladies. Of course, he would reach out to uh, congregants and other pastors and explain to them the necessity of having uh, this advantage and take advantage of it. Why you need it? Because you can't sell me no Tupperware if I don't need none. I don't care how how you come to me. So it, that needs to happen. And so to me, those are the two next steps that could could be uh, listed. So Mar March one is pretty much a done deal, yeah. mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's yeah. a week away, uh, and I agree that everything could, should be done between now and March one to increase the numbers. But I what I hear is that we're setting the agenda for beyond March one. I mean, there's been a lot of stuff today about how to market this. Seems to me that that's what we're, we're talking about. And it, to me, it comes down to three things, number seven, number eight, and number nine. Number seven, we need these committees uh, to spend some time kind of making statements about each one of these ten things, you know, and what we want to see done for each one of these ten things. Um, and again, that becomes kind of our marching orders. Um, because, you know, there are a lot of ideas out there about how we can possibly make use of broadband. I'm talking about music education, for example. I mean, we, we have the tutorial programs and so on. There's some applications that we need to be spending some time with. So the more we can clarify and sharpen up, you know, here's our one-page summary of what we want to do with each one of those ten things, I think the better we'll be. Because the better we can then go and find other sources of funding you know, to fit the priorities that we've identified. And then number eight, I mean, the, the question of organizational structure was a big thing at the last meeting. You know, how we go about, and the timetable for going about making that decision. You know, so as you say, that can be presented to the policy board. This is what the community has put forward as the way it wants to proceed. Seems to me seven and eight with nine as a timetable is where our focus needs to be. Yes. But I do agree with uh, some of the things that are saying that is being said right here, and I think that everybody then is kind of in agreement on like moving forward in the next step. So um, I think you said mine, right? Because you said it sounded like you said there needed to be like some type of crusade, a bunch of people going out. That was exactly what it felt like. I had some type of people need to go out and do some type of promoting something to to, to spread the word. And I think that a lot of people in this community. No, don't really know what UC2B is, but they know what Tableau is, and it's kind of like the same type of thing, you know? And we need to let everybody know that UC2B is even better than Pablo because it's more of a community-based type of organization. Pablo spends $3,000 a week on billboards. UC2B hasn't true. spent $1 on billboards. Well, then, then it should be, then if there's going to be, if we need like a advertisement or something, then there should be a, a committee for that. But I think that Ron makes a point that's powerful. That is that we have some time, but we're not going to change UC to be qualitatively in the next week. No. Right. No. So what this committee is about is how are we going to network and support activities that are already going on in the community relative to the digital divide, and how are we going to initiate new projects to fill in the gaps? And that's where these 10 points, and so the question is, are there any areas that are not addressed by the 10 points? Because one of the things that's gonna happen is when the digital divide fund is approved by the policy committee, that will be the establishment of a committee. And the committee will need sort of marching orders, a framework, 
And if we can provide that, we will have structured the way in which it's going to go. Right. And so we've got these 10 points. And it's these 10 points we can start with. And if they need to be changed, they need to be changed. But the point is, we've now got a piece of paper in front of us. And as of last meeting, we didn't have this paper in front of us. So now we can go forward with the kind of committees that we need to have. And that's what we need to decide now. OK, Brian, Iman. Um, would, would, it, would it be safe for me to say that the people that are in this room, we already exist as the, the CBF Executive Committee? Can we, can we just say that? Can we just, we, since we are all working on this together. Just a whole lot of people. That, why, why not? Why not? No, five of us maybe? Can we just, I, I'm a part of it? No, no, I'll we, raise my hand. We are the, the community meeting that's taking place to put forward proposals to the policy committee. But I'm saying, but there, there needs to be that, that organizational structure. Like he's saying, it's very important. We have to hold them accountable. Because the big picture is that there is a small amount of money in that fund now, and it's being because it's 2% of the 850 people. But one year from now, if Gigabit Squared or some other $50 million venture capitalist funds comes in and build out the rest of the city, we're talking about a community benefit fund, 2% of 100,000 people signed up to UCDB. It's possible that there could be 50,000 people that sign up for it if they spend $50 million and sign up with the rest of the community. So it won't just be the yellow zone. We, we will hold the university responsible for upholding the community benefit fund mm. for the entire network. Mm. So we're not talking about, right now it's about, what we did the math at our last meeting, it's like $800 a month. But that's only for 1,000 subscribers. We're talking about having 50,000 subscribers possibly. And, and we are a contender. This, this town is a contender for having that kind of money roll mm -hmm. in and build, do the build out. We have the infrastructure. Whoever, whoever buys this infrastructure, they already have a $30 million head start. And they have a high tech community. So I'm thinking a year from now, okay. if we don't have this executive committee holding the university responsible for all that money that's coming in, because they're hoping that we drop this issue. Okay. Because they know, oh, we already got the Gigabit Squared in, in, in the bag, or we create a co-op. Either way, co-op, Gigabit Squared, Univer uh, the, uh, um, Urbana does their own city thing. Either way, they've agreed to it, and we have to hold them responsible for it. If not, it'd be like, y'all ain't show up to a meeting in a year. There is no community. So Brian, what I don't understand is this, man. If, if somebody came in now and says, here is a lot of money to spend on something, I'm not sure if we have our priorities straight in light of these right. 10 things. We ain't, want, we ain't shovel ready. What we would want the money to be spent <laughs> on. So, you know, so I, I think we still need to be very oh, clear yeah. on oh, yeah. for each one of these 10 things, here are three priorities that the community feels will address the digital divide, whatever whatever those are. So organizational structure is one thing, but our, and I think it came out in this meeting when the brother says, we're opening a lab, we need curriculum, we need instructors, and so on. I mean, we, we have some very concrete and specific ideas that are being put on the table, but we're not organizing those ideas in a little chart so we can kind of keep up with them from week to week. So and I, I think it's too easy to get caught up. You know, people keep talking about the university. I'm the head of the Black Studies Department, the, university, the new head. But I spent my time in these meetings trying to understand what y'all want me to put forward to the university that you want the university to do. Mm. So that vague university thing, I'm not, I haven't talked to Phyllis about what, what she wants me to do. It's the community that I'm listening to. But if we don't tighten down and say, look, here are the three top priorities in each one of these ten areas that we want the funds devoted to, and here is our organizational structure to go to the mat and struggle with people over getting that done, mm. we'll be back in next year having the same discussion. So those two things, organizational structure, whatever that is, and our priorities about how we best support a lot of good stuff that's going on already, mm -hmm. and a lot of good stuff that there are ideas around the table that can go on. I mean, it seems to me that those are the two legs we need to walk on to tighten this up. Um, just to lay the subscription thing to rest, can you clarify, is by March 1st is when it will count as though you don't have to pay 
to get the cable to your door. That, yes. That's that yes. deadline, right? Yes, let me just explain that. Yeah. The bidding that took place at the very beginning was very ambiguous because it wasn't clear how many people were going to sub. So the people that uh, put a proposal forward and bid it on the, on the job didn't know exactly what they had to do. This time, based on the people who are subscribing, the people who will bid will know exactly how many, and therefore the amount of money will be more exact, mm -hmm. because the $3 million can disappear instantly. And you know that's part of the issue. Uh, now, what I put forward is the idea of the potentially taking some money off the top of the three million, possibly with the, ne the need for a community match in order to roll out the Wi-Fi. If that doesn't happen, then the Wi-Fi is going to be less uh, definite. If we don't get the Wi-Fi, then it's going to be hard for us to argue an approximation to universal access. So I hear that and love that. What I'm trying to understand is, will we be in trouble if we don't have 2,500 subscribers by the first? No. no. Nobody's going to be in default. Let me also explain yeah, that. Thank you. <laughs> the $30 million that we got involved 20 plus million from the federal government. Quinn stashed some money into a capital fund that the state legislature wasn't hip to that he then made available to help supplement all the projects because of the importance of bringing BTOP to Illinois. Mm -hmm. That helped us. I think we got five million from that. And then the local people, the city, uh, the two cities kicked in money, the university kicked in money, School the hospitals kicked in money because they want a dedicated strand because of privacy, security, and because they have needs. They're sending x-rays across and so forth. School districts get kicked in the most money. The university is interested in having its faculty at home, like a physicist or something, that needs big pipe coming into the house to work at home. So people kicked in money. Why did they kick in money? Because UC to B, in the long run, is going to reduce their IT costs. And the school systems did as well, because everybody's going to benefit from that. However, the money was given initially on the basis of community take up. But we saw this at the very beginning, and some of you have heard me say this at meetings. Once they put the pipes underground, they're not going to snatch the pipes up out of ground. <laughs> so if we had 10 subscribers, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a big deal. Now, if you go to any other project in the United States, not one other project has to the premise. Mm -hmm. That's right. All the other money is about hooking up schools, hospitals, police departments, fire departments, airports, bus stations, etc. Nobody else has the kind of money we got. Gotcha. And therefore, it was a gesture, yes. but if we only have 800, they will, who are they going to blame? Sure. Well, the people they hire to do the marketing are all black people. Mm. And they don't live in the community. So it was, you know, mm. a situation. Mm. So who's at fault? Because most of the criticism that's been raised here is against the marketing staff, if you want to really target somebody well, who is paid to, to do this. Who can so, still benefit by the first? Because the benefit, if you sign up by the first, is that you don't have to pay for the insul installation from the street to your house. Right. That's what's left until the first. Is that correct? What isn't clear is what the bids for the uh, four organizations that are going to roll it out to the rest of the community. So Gigabit Squared, this option where this venture capitalist has $250 million to invest. And he's going to invest $50 million in each of five cities. They've already chosen Seattle. We're on the short list. 
if we get that 50 million, I'm not exactly sure whether they will replicate UC to B throughout the entire community, which is what Google did in Kansas City. In other words, Google in Kansas City said, we are going to have a pipe run to every house. And then what happened is, they said, oh, well, we'll do a neighborhood at a time if the neighborhood organizes. Mm -hmm. And what happened is some sisters and some churches in the black community of Kansas City started meeting and organized their community so that now Google is going to do all those communities. So when you, when you uh, um, Imani said just then that anchor institutions, do they have to, even though they've been identified as an anchor institution, there's a new list, right? Do they have to sign up by March 1st to be hooked up? To yes. It? They do. Yes, because we can't break down their door and go in and hook it up. Right. They have to be willing. Mm -hmm. And so this yeah. list yeah. that we got the last time yeah. was the most up-to-date. And my charge is to put an exclamation point on everybody here that ain't actually subscribed yet. So if there's and a, how many we can get by the first right. is great. So if there's, gotcha. a if there's a priority, it seems to me, going it's after anchor churches. institutions where you have the possibility of then putting on top a wireless piece on top of that right. and reaching more people. I would say that the anchor institutions are more important than the individual subscribers for the next seven And this days. is a phone call. Right? Yeah. If a minister in a church were to make a phone call and to be, uh, actually it'd probably be better to have some kind of paper, some kind of way to prove you did it, but we got it. It, it doesn't have to be a drawn out thing. I mean, right now, UC to B is very sensitive to all the criticisms that are coming forward from you know any different any number of directions. So this is a moment if we act decisively, we can get stuff. If you remember at the last meeting, criticism came up. Mike Smelter and somebody else is there, they were trying to address the questions right away. Because it's sensitive. This is a public. They have to do something. You know, and they're well meaning people and, and so we have to bring it to their attention. So I take your point, Ron, that's very important because if we get a church hooked up, then the congregation is impacted. We get one person hooked up, then their family's impacted. Both are important, but right now, with a short time, if we were to target the churches and whatever else, you know, if there's any social service agencies or, you know, that can be really small, <coughs> that maybe we're missed, now's the time to do that. And if, if somebody knows of that uh, and you don't know who to contact, send an email to me. Uh, and you know, like I said, the meeting is going to be on Wednesday, and I can get a commitment from them, you know, to make sure that that makes the deadline. So that, that's another way to work this. But I think right now, the, the issue is, does anyone else have any contribution for the future? What you think this meeting and the subsequent meetings, who we should invite, what the agenda should be, et cetera. That's one point. But the other point is this notion of a committee coming out of this uh, to do some work uh, on this document or anything else we decide to, to, to push it forward. I mean, that's, that's the point. In other words, what I want everybody here to feel is <coughs> responsible for the future of this process. And so what I'm suggesting is we have at least one, maybe two committees, and the committee could be three people. Doesn't, shouldn't be that big. Uh, to do whatever we think should be done. And I mean, Ron has made a proposal that the last points here need to be dealt with. Uh, I think uh, Reverend Nash made a proposal that maybe we need to think a little bit more about the digital divide to make sure we're all focused in on that, particularly as it relates to the areas of work and the areas of life that our people are involved in. Uh, I think, for example, one of the questions about cultural productivity in the community is that uh, the hip-hop rap community uh, is very much involved in this digital technology. Uh, they haven't been at the table. Uh, but how are they going to get to the table? Because we can talk all day, all night, and for the next 10 meetings about who's not at the table, uh, but we can impact that only by deciding who can take the responsibility to go out and reach these various sectors of our community and get them to the table. I don't want to keep complaining about who's not at the table. And nobody else here does. So how are we going to identify how to bring people? I mean, for example, we have a couple of people here who are students at Gisless. 
uh, we have a community informatics program. Uh, how can you understand community informatics if you're not down in a meeting like this where you hear the reality of the community con you know, talking to itself and trying to figure out a way to how to get forward? And therefore, Jeff, you know, we need to talk to the people in community informatics because you can't do that in a lab divorced from the community. This is the community environment in which any technology we have has to be tested by virtue of whether or not the community can embrace it, see the utility of it. The same is true in the churches. We have a ministerial alliance, right? But all the ministers are not coming to the meetings. And the only way they can be educated is to come to the meetings. And if they're not educated, then that's slowing our community down. And if they can't come to a meeting, then we have to figure out how we can go to whatever meeting they can come to and educate them. And the same thing is true with the social service agencies, dealing with the homeless, etc. All their budgets are being cut. So they're looking at survival. And what we need to do is to figure out how what we represent can help them not only you know, provide the services that they're providing, but to survive. So we've got a lot of different issues going on in our community, but the main thing is nobody's going to help us but us. So we need some volunteers. We need to, out of this meeting right here, what is the next step? You know, in other words, I don't want somebody to come and complain about somebody else. I want us right now, to the best we can, to say what should be the next step. So I, I want to volunteer for something. Um, I, I, I want to work with a group of people to take each one of the 10 points, right? And at the top of a piece of paper, put computers. And then structure a, a little, a one-page summary that we can use in a, in a group discussion, a small committee group discussion or a larger group to say, okay, when it comes to getting free machine, getting machines out, what are the suggestions that we do? Same thing is true with, uh, well, it's what we tried last week when Brian talked about computers, Carol talked about the labs. I mean, there are people, who, uh, Brian talked about cyberspace. We've already identified people who are working on these areas, which just seems to me we just need to kind of now focus that so that we have a plan of action for each one of these 10 things that everybody can feed into, all of the ideas can feed into, we can edit it. And again, monitor as a web page so that everybody knows when it comes to hardware, this is what we're talking about. When it comes to classes, these are some ideas, right? So I, I take that point, but I would, yes. You, you know, I, I'm listening to all you guys, and it sounds wonderful. I belong to this outstanding church. They're, they're doing everything that I hear you people are saying. I hear everybody in here saying they have a, an outreach program for churches, men yes. and women. They have, they have, they run a school. What church is this? Canaan, Canaan Academy. Mm -hmm. They have a lab. They have a music class. And, there, and a lot of these people are doing this with no pay. And, and something like this for the, the, something like this here, they'll get the money some kind of way. People, you'd be surprised. The Girl Scouts raised over, uh, it was like $1,500 for the women's home. That church is hopping. And I think they'll hop on this. Well, we have I'd Chris like to Hannon, go in, who is like the go technology there. person at Canaan. And, and so we're very center. connected. Oh, do you? We have a Canaan rep. Come <laughs> on. Yes. Um, the gentleman on the end that talked about a, he needs like a printout about getting organized and what, what our objectives are here at UCC. Um, I've already talked to a couple organizations in this town. I've talked to the Salvation Army. I've talked to my church. And what church is that? Vineyard. And I've talked to um, uh, Public Health. So I'm, the people that I know of at all those, um, or all those institutions, I've worked with them before, so I have a pretty good rapport with them. But when they ask me questions, I have nothing to say. And I'm trying to find things to kind of say about what's going on here and what our objectives are. So I really feel like for someone that has already been kind of hitting the pavement, I need a, a nice summary so I could, yeah, <laughs> yeah, get <to> that, <laughs> but even more complete. So that, you know, because they're going to be asking these questions, wait, 
You're, you're asking me to give up my internet service to go with you. Well, they want to make sure that this is a legit thing and it's a good thing. Because they're, you know, well, what if it isn't, you know, what if it's hard to download things? What if the service is slow and stuff like that? So they have these, like, no support. yeah, they have all these, you know, concerns. I need to have something. I think that we're going to have people hit the pavement. We have to first have those objectives written out. We have a staff, and we have to hold that staff accountable. In other words, UCDB has a staff. People are being paid. Okay. And that information is on two websites. And I will get you all the links to all the information that exists. That's really part of the issue here. But now we're focusing on what we, we have to do. Because that staff is going out of business. Uh, and I'm not sure. Uh, what more we can expect of them. I don't know. But I do know that uh, the long-term responsibility for this is going to be what happens at New Hope, at Canaan, at Vineyard, at all these churches. You know, that's, that's an infrastructure. These, could, these social service agencies, another network. Um, now, Ron has proposed uh, a committee, so we need to get some volunteers for that committee. I also want to ask Reverend Carr whether or not at the next uh, Ministerial Alliance meeting we can have some formal input by the Ministerial Alliance as to what they think the direction of this ought to be. In other words, what I want to do is to start calling on all organized bodies in our community that have an interest in this to step up to the plate and become known for their view on the situation. So it's sort of like, uh, you know how when people do a friend of the court brief, you know, every, everybody else states their view from their perspective as to what should happen. So for example, this notion of uh, how do we get all the churches connected and how does this serve the uh, community of religious institutions? This is a big thing. But the only people who can define that are the churches themselves. And so we need that input. Yeah. Yes, um, regarding um, the Lions, I won't be at the, our next meeting, but I would like to have uh, us discuss and um, talk about this issue and um, what, you know, we have um, people from, members from the Lions who have been um, not representing, but dealing with um, uh, UCDB for some months and been a part of it issues and things that have been going on. Um, we haven't discussed among ourselves just to see what, what can we do, what, what, what is our role, what is important here. I, I just want to make one comment also that we have um, you know, churches that signed off at the beginning um, and churches that have labs. Uh, I can see that you know, there's a gap. You know, there's some churches doing some things in a vacuum maybe. Um, coming together, sharing information, and reaching out to the larger community. Mm -hmm. um, Reverend Barton said, you know, establishing, you know, you know, not just a leadership per se, but just among ourselves, we're all coming together. We should be coming together and, okay, what is, you know, like uh, different churches that are having different um, programs, activities, reaching out to, because we say in this, you know, resolution I keep hearing, I keep, you know, reading about this, uh, you know, the stimulus money was underserved. Are we, what are we doing for the underserved community? What are we doing for the underserved population? We need to be reaching out. How can we do that? And focusing on that. You know, the you know, university gave money, the cities gave money, and, you know, then they make it known. We gave money. Mm -hmm. Well, who's that money representing? Did they give the money personally? No, the money came from somewhere. It's public dollars. Okay, so what are we doing? You know, so I, I, I'm just having... We, we haven't had a chance to discuss, you know, I've been dealing with some things. I mean, there are things going on in schools, the, you know, families need a support. And I, I think I heard about, you know, transportation. If, if uh, the youth are needing, you know, to use the computers, we need to have, make sure a piece with transportation. Families, they have to work, you know, the, the parents are working, how are we going to help them? So that's part of that the digi digital divide that has to do with the future of our, uh, uh, you know, our youth. 
you know, when we were off the scene, are we preparing our youth? So I'll just say that and leave it with. Okay, we still need volunteers. Ron suggested he would uh, <clears throat> want to be, he proposed a committee to deal with program. I would, I would volunteer something specific if people are interested. I know some of you don't need this, but um, there's a workshop that I do that helps people move from this is my vision to these are the barriers in the way to these are the resources we need to this is the commitment I'd like to make that has been quite effective with specific populations. It might be a way of getting people who we want at the table or want in better numbers to really feel some ownership because they would really get it then because they said, here's what I want, and they're the ones who, who said their understanding of barriers, benefits, but the clinch is the last question, which is what could you see yourself doing alone or with you see to be a community benefits fund that would get us closer to this vision. Because then you get a commitment before people walk out the door. Um, I'm happy to volunteer to do that once or multiple times. If folks here think that that would be useful, if different organizations it might be useful to, or just a call, whoever wants to show up. Any thoughts on something like that? Okay. <laughs> well, here's the here's the issue. We, obviously, we have individuals that want to do something, right. but we do need to um, move beyond um, any individual trying to figure out what the next agenda should be and and so on. That's so, me trying to get to Ron's ten things. That's right. Yes. That's right. But I'm, what I'm saying is, we need to have some kind of group form now so that the future of these meetings will be much more a function of the diverse positions in the community. When's the next meeting? That's part of what we, we need to decide. In other words, right now, be March we were March. talking about having it every two weeks because of the Ministerial Alliance. That's why we decided that. Now, uh, given the timetable and everything, we can reconsider all this, but we do need to have a collective come out of this process so that we organizationally and politically advance beyond where we have come to at this point. So we need some volunteers for the committee. You know what they say, you know, uh, put, your, uh, put your body where your mouth has been. You know what I mean? In other words, step up. That's what we need. So I'd like to, uh, a couple of the committees that I'm definitely really interested in are the, the classes committee. Um, but wait a minute, we, we, we have one committee for the 10 points. I see. We don't have 10 committees. <laughs> got We're it, trying got to get one committee. Got it, got it. Well, sign me up. Okay. Sign me up. Okay, that's three men. A fourth man. Any sisters want to step up? So and we got a fifth man. If you if if you need me, I'll be there. I'm <laughs> happy to get somebody else there instead, but I'm not going to keep it a you know all testosterone arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> that's the upside of the picture. <laughs> so I think yeah, some other point. Were you volunteering for the committee? So that, okay, so, um, so when we end this meeting, if everybody that volunteered for the committee can just have a quick moment with Ron so you can work out, you know, when you're going to meet next and so on. Yes, Reverend Carr. Yeah, I just want to say this. Um, I would like to, uh, the Alliance needs to vote on its representatives, what I need to say. If we're going to be involved and have someone be able to come, I won't be able to come all the time, but if we vote that way, then that's the person that will be assigned. You see what I'm saying? So I can't commit to anything right now, okay. but um, whoever that person or person is, okay. persons are, then that would be 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, but definitely step, like be with Ron so you'll know all the details so that you can get somebody to come to the next meeting. Uh, Jeff, let me ask you this question. How do we mobilize more community informatics students to get involved? I don't think you're going to like my answer, but uh, Martin Wolski, he is the most connected to the boots on the ground right now. Um, I am on my way out finishing a PhD, so I don't work with the students very often these days. Um, he has two classes that deal with teaching people to work in labs, set up labs, and then also teaching people to teach in labs. I think that's the best source for students. So now he's already got a lot of engagements going on, but I know that he's open to doing collaborations if you come to him and meet him where he is. Well, so. if he's got engagements going on in this community. Yeah, Shadowwood is a great example of one that I know he just committed to like a couple of days ago. Um, and they're a group that, for instance, I don't think has been all that connected into this effort. That's the, the trailer park for those that don't know. Um, so I think there are opportunities through that. Who is that? I also would say um, Martin getting uh, Laisha here, I mean, the remaining UC to be staff, Shavian Scott has now replaced Sharon Irish as the assistant director to John Gant with what Gisless is now doing. Getting those two people in the picture here would be a good step towards making things happen on that side. All these people so. are on the listserv. They all knew about this meeting. So we need to make additional effort is what you're saying. Yeah, um, also, I'm, 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 I was talking to Karen Barton, who's over at Urbana Free Library right now running programs. Um, as another person, she's paid. And part of what she's paid to do is do some of the one of the things you've got on this list. Um, she can't because her things are on Saturday mornings. So I imagine some of these people, it's actually just a timing thing and not an interest thing. So, well, again, that's a positive view. I, I take the same positive view. The only problem is, is that we continue to meet and we need input. So. Uh, if you can talk to Martin uh, or spread the word, uh, I'll try to do the same. Uh, but the thing is, is that unless we have the people here who are doing things, you know, then we won't know about them. I mean, none of us. And so I don't know if Reverend Barnes, are you, you're, you know about this particular uh, project? What, a shadow work? Mm -hmm. Well, we started the uh, Community Technology Center over there with got them started and I think the U of I have come over now and start piggybacking off that. I don't know what they're doing with them right now. We had a uh, community engagement with my organization uh, where we would set them up with the community technology center and provide them uh, programs and then involve them in uh, mobile food banks. You know, both, we're just trying to address some of the most immediate needs. Okay. CU Citizen Access was the group that picked up Shadowwood after I think. So, and they provide sort of the connection to the university. Martin just stepped on that one, actually. So The only problem I had when I started over at Shadowwood was the university coming over and benefiting from whatever they were doing with the uh, community. But when they left, the community was no better. That's an ongoing challenge. That's why I'm a little hesitant to suggest student labor, honestly. I mean, if, if you can fit into a class that exists, and the class is always there, then you can do it. But if you're counting on students that are going to disappear after a semester, then you're going to keep running into trouble. Mm -hmm. So, and those of us that are the PhD students that have stuck around, myself, Noel Lenstra, Jeannie, Austin, we at some point also have to graduate and kind of get pulled out of this stuff too. See, part of it is, the way I look at it is, it's really a question of culture. The culture of being a student today is different than the culture uh, in the past and the culture that it has to be in the future. So for example, community informatics students that don't have an orientation to being in the community is a philosophical, scholarly, and moral problem. And that's, that's the issue we've got. Because we've got a whole group of people over there who say they're interested in community informatics. Um, and without a relation to the community that gets all the way down like in this meeting, they are not going to be properly educated because they will go into a community and never have gone through the process of this kind of discussion, which is difficult and yet necessary. So I think that's another aspect of our conversation with Phyllis Wise, because a university uh, could accept the responsibility of impacting this more than 100-year relationship with African American community and really all poor people in Champaign County and for that matter in relation to the state because you must remember the university had an office 
the Agricultural Extension Office in every one of the 102 counties in Illinois. And that's when it was committed to the rural agricultural development of the state. Now we're in the 21st century and it's a new ball game. The university is pulled back and so it only has about 35 offices now or less in the whole state. Even the agricultural school has redefined itself and they're moving toward the digital. So we are now in a process of trying to get Phyllis Wise to say the land grant university has a real opportunity here to reorganize itself and even to incentivize the students to develop applications that are relevant for us. Remember, this is one of the leading technological schools in the country. PayPal comes out of here. The, the uh, 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 Mosaic. Uh, the Browser. Uh, browser. Yeah, the browser comes out of here. Uh, what else comes out YouTube, of here? YouTube. YouTube comes out of here. So this place is a very special place. And if we turn the brain power of this place onto solving some of our problems, which can't be done without partnering